Hello, welcome to a brand new episode of the Internet's Most Hated Podcast, Long Coat Mafia Podcast. It is I, the Reverend Godfather, the show's main host and front man. This week, this week, folks, we have a returning guest, and that guest is Randy from Geek World Order. And some of you out there who've been listening to us for a good long while might remember Randy from about seven months ago uh, when he was on. And you might remember the audio quality wasn't that good and uh, how we recorded Skype calls back about seven months months ago was not that good as well. Now, since then, we've learned a few things at the Lone Coat Mafia podcast and the audio quality has vastly improved. That's right, vastly improved. So, stay tuned in a few short moments for uh, our little show with Randy and as he tells us what he's been up to for the past couple of months and uh, he joins in the conversation in regards to Ghostbusters, Star Trek, Star Wars and a plethora of other topics so stay tuned and here is that Skype call everyone Hi folks, Uh, welcome back uh, from the intro as you probably figured, we have a returning person. It's been at least six or seven months since he's been on the show. This time, better audio. <laughs> I can guarantee it. And plus, he's now in stereo. Uh, <laughs> welcome back, Randy. Um, for those of you, for those out there who are just tuning into our program, uh, tell us who you are and what web- website you are from. For those of you who don't know, my name is Randy, and I am the man behind the plan here. I am the one, the only, the ruler, the runner of Geek World Order, which you can find at geekworldorder.com. Well, wait a minute. I thought it was geekworldordersite.com. I actually have both domain names. Oh, okay. The, the original domain I bought was Geek World Order Site. Ah. Because um, so when I went to... <laughs> technically, both are correct. Okay. But when I bought the original domain name... Somebody was sitting on geekworldorder.com, and it wasn't being used. So now you managed to get the other one? Yes. That just one of those weird things. I was going in. I was renewing my domain name, actually. And I was like, and it was, I was just did a search, and I was like, whoa, it's available. Buy, click, mine. <laughs> so um, give us a little bit of an update. What's been going on with Geek World Order? Oh, really? It's just kind of the the same old thing, man. Going to conventions, taking photos. Uh, I've got a couple of projects in the works that I'm working on and just trying to do some background work on. Hopefully, I'll be making some announcements within the next couple of weeks about some projects that are going to be taken off this year and really just trying to work and get good geeky content out and trying to put out feelers to get content sent to me and... Really just trying to build up a good, strong foundation for the year. I've been trying to do that myself. Uh, we had, a, at least with 2018's concerned, our, the last uh, six months or so, um, from roughly July to December, we had, it was just a, a plethora of, yeah, you can record our panel. Okay, <laughs> let's do this. So it was a great way to uh, get a lot of geeky content on on our side um we have a lot of uh great things in store coming at least this is for the listeners um i know i'm still gratefully uh thankful to randy uh for sharing our show links every now and again on his site but we have a lot of great things in store in it for 2018. Uh, some of it is with Don and Punk Music. So that should be awesome. Uh, we'll be sharing a lot of, in essence, raw v- audio and maybe some video with you guys. So that's that. Um, Earl wants to come back on the show with what I don't know. Uh, so stay tuned because I know some of you out there do want like do like Earl. Uh, and not to mention we'll be covering... I might be making jokes as as the event gets closer. We'll be covering... Last year, we covered ghosts. This year, we're covering Bigfoot. (laughs) Next year, UFOs. (laughs) Uh, Maybe we could get UFOs this year. There there is that alien con in Baltimore. Uh, (laughs) That would be be funny as hell. Uh, (laughs) 
I have to thank my co-host Big Candy for uh, getting us in the show in touch with the folks uh, of a local. Uh, I think this might be his first year doing it. He's holding uh, like a Bigfoot convention. So <laughs> props to my co-host on that. I do thank him very much for that. So it, it should be awesome. I want to get the guy on our show and talk about it. More on stuff like uh, Bigfoot and ghosts and conspiracy theory. No, wait. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Uh, I want to hear about, more about Randy and his site. Uh, what con did you recently... Did you go to a con recently? Uh, yes, our most recent event was last weekend at the Central Florida Comic Con in Lakeland at the RP Funding Center, which is actually a very nice, uh, like a smaller convention center. And this was actually a pretty good attendance for our first time event. And I really hope more um, smaller events use this facility. And Lakeland, really, it's not too far out. It's a little bit further out from... Orlando. It's kind of about a good midway point between like Orlando and Tampa. Yeah, that's why I usually tell people when they say where my stepdad's from, living right now, and I say Lakeland, and they're like, where's that? And I said, well, it's kind of like where, uh, at least locally for me, it's like how Martinsburg is between Hagerstown and Winchester. It's like really in between those two cities. So, it, meaning that Lakeland is, like you said, between Tampa and uh, Orlando. So it might be a good excuse to see my stepdad if I had money <laughs> to fly down and see him. Plus, I know Dobbs would, is kind of excited. He wants me down there to see me and visit him. It would be nice to see a lot of the gang, including yourself, Dobbs. Uh, I think all you guys know where Lakeland is anyway. Yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, for me personally, I'm over on the ocean side, Brevard County. Ah, uh, you're that far out. Yeah, I'm about 30 miles south of Kennedy Space Center. So Lakeland is a like just under a two-hour drive for me, right? Which is not bad. No, no. I used to live in Ocala, so. Oh, that's yeah, that's pretty good ways out there. Oh yeah, uh, as I know, you and Dobbs know, I'm I'm a Knowles fan, and I got my first. Uh, this is I'm willing to tell this to a lot of folks out there. I don't know if I told you, uh, I don't know if I told Dobbs, but when I got my first car, it was in Gainesville, and the Knowles and the Gators were playing each other that day. It was not easy for me to get my car trying to root for the Knowles. <laughs> I got dirty looks, <laughs> and they tied <laughs> that day. So that tells you even how hard it was. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, it was definitely a fun convention. Uh, pretty good guest turnout for, like, a first-year con. They had uh, Marina Sirdis, uh Phil Lamar, Austin St. John, the original Red Ranger. Um, wow, that... Um Especially Phil Lamar and uh, Mayo, yeah, that's that's pretty good good right there. Uh, I'm not sure about the first um, Red Ranger, but uh, guest wise, that's pretty a strong uh, first year. Uh, what are your estimates about the attendance? Uh, that I don't know. I didn't get to wander a lot of the convention floor. Kind of took some rounds. Uh, I was there more with the finest costuming group, uh, so we were kind of at their booth, dressed up as GI Joes all day. That's but understood. It, but it was it definitely was a good turnout like like there were definitely people all throughout the floor like yeah i wouldn't be not sure i'd be able to really give a good estimate on that but no it it did not look deserted in there that's always good so i, I want to say even though i wasn't there that sound from what you're explaining maybe a grand and a half if not more starting so probably uh, then that's a pretty good a uh, average for a first year. Um, Lakeland is definitely a good spot for it. A lot of smaller shows. I think I spoke to Matt, uh, who run uh, used to run four state, help run four state Comic Con, and a lot of the small shows is, is what we need. But uh, hopefully, it's not a bubble that bursts anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So right, and really anything in the Central Florida region is not bad. Especially when you're pretty much, especially if you're emanating anywhere close to Orlando, because really from Central Florida you're basically center of the state. So you're like pretty much Orlando is about an hour away from either coast. Right. So within an hour you could be as far out as like from Orlando you could be up as high as Daytona, down to like you know like Vero Beach area, 
usually and then the corresponding coat the other coasts like clearwater ebor some of those you're usually within an hour or so of orlando yeah uh, folks uh that's what i i don't know if randy will agree with me or not but a two-hour drive for a show is a, a, a reasonable distance to get to a major convention. That's why I like Baltimore. Uh, DC is a, a very uh, decent place to go to because it's easy for me to get there due to the train. Um, but there's something to, to be said about the the smaller shows like Four State and the one that we're talking right now in Lakeland because not many people are able to make it to um, the larger shows or out that far to to Orlando to DC. To a major city in general, so uh, that be the case. Special shout out to uh, Ocala Comic Con and their upcoming uh, uh, show. I'm not sure exactly when it is, but special shout out to them. That's my Florida hometown. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no, two hours is really not that bad. Um, that's usually like I usually don't want to drive that far out without staying the night. Like if it's going to be more than a two hour drive. I'm probably looking to get in a hotel room. Oh, same here. When I used to go to uh, Philly, it was always, I'm staying for the weekend. That's it. Yeah, I, I've done the drive, like, all the way out to Tampa, which is a three-hour drive for me. I've done it back and forth in a day, doing a con. I know I've done, like, MetroCon, the big anime con out there on one day. It was not fun. Or, you know, the, the six hours total of driving in one day, that was not fun. But, so. yeah, usually about the two-hour mark is where I kind of go, mm, kind of want a hotel. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, yeah, I've driven four hours total to see a friend of mine. Uh, but that's four hours there, four hours back. But when it comes to, for a day trip, yeah, fine. But if I want to, like yourself, to experience a, a convention, um especially a large convention you definitely want to stay the night and at least catch two days of it and you don't it's a lot of times it's an expense and it just wears you out greatly mm -hmm. right i i know that's like one of the things where being so central to orlando and the orlando scene it's like an hour for me to get to orlando so that's why i'm able to hit up so many cons there because like all right i can drive an hour there hour back and you know even if i'm up at like you know, out the door at like eight in the morning and coming home after midnight, it's still entirely doable. Oh, that, that used to be Baltimore for me. Definitely. Um, because what I used to do is get up at like six, seven o'clock in the morning, uh, have something quick to eat, head on out to Baltimore, be there by eight, nine o'clock, do at least do Baltimore for one day and come home that night and at midnight because sometimes I'd catch a, a, a baseball game and just stay in the, the city for the day and it was fun and I'd do th the next day too and it would just wear me out but I'd have, I'll have a good time mm -hmm. oh yeah definitely and uh, let's if you're ready let's get down to some news I'm desperate to hear some of your uh, opinions on uh, I don't know if you can't really comment too much about it please uh let me know and we'll kind of mm -hmm. skip over it uh but if you're willing to talk about it, we'll talk about it uh uh first off is the whole um i don't know how 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 do i put this how much you've been hearing about the whole new uh, let's call it ghostbusters ghostbusters 2020 um <laughs> i don't know if you're laughing about it. my my earphones are kind of crappy i'm doing the best i can here but uh, the news that's been coming in has been it's kind of scattered brain because there has been just that rumors uh from what i've been hearing it's going to be teens the original cast is going to be in it not going to be in it everything is just the pot and the mud has been stirring constantly uh what have you been hearing about it if anything? i mean so far i've basically seen what everyone else has i saw the teaser trailer which that was cool we know jason reitman who is directing it and for those who don't know jason reitman is the son of ivan reitman who directed the original ghostbusters one and two and jason for those out there who like movies jason was the the quote unquote bratty kid in the sequel 
So there's that little bit of tidbit, folks. Who say we don't give out information? Uh, and good chance he said he wants to bring it back. He wants to be fans. And from what uh, some reports saying that he wants to do the actual handing off story that should have been there. And again, the drama is ensuing that um, I kept most of it on my personal timeline. And it's just what came out within the last, I want to say 24 to 48 hours. I had to put it on the show's timeline. But it's what Paul Feig or Feige or whatever the hell you want to pronounce his name. Uh, Paul Grant Feig. Feig. Uh, he's stirring a lot of uh, stuff lately. And again, it shouldn't. Have, oh. it's, See, I didn't even think what he was saying was really all that controversial. I think more of the controversy is coming from Leslie Jones. Right. And uh, her opinions. Right. Uh, basically, what I've been saying. Um, Granted, a lot of folks know my opinion of the show. Uh, back in when the movie came out, please uh, visit our main website at thelongcoatmafia.podbean.com and go back to 2016 and search for it. You're more than welcome to. Those are my thoughts. Um, but basically, she's um, taught, bring up all this nonsense and just hate and blame and everything else. Uh, she's blaming everybody, including Trump, for the disaster in 2016. And it's just not right. It, it, it's a, almost a repeat of back when that t Ghostbusters 2016 was coming out or was out. Uh, we saw it recently last year with um, Last Jedi. Uh, it's just the whole blaming of the fans again. And a lot of people are now are starting to come out and blame like including leslie jones i think she's might be spearheading this in some way uh that even uh Feige said like oh we can't really blame trolls and uh let me bring bring up the tw he actually retreated that uh retweeted a tweet i guess it's uh, a friend of his or somebody that was on his list that stated something like well you gotta bl blame all the ghost uh, ghost bros in regards to this and that's what like brought my comment on the um, our shows page if I could bring it up real quick Facebook is always a pain in the ass <laughs> on mobile devices right but, it's definitely uh, a bit like, of a uh, there's definitely a divide now I didn't see the the new version movie until it had already been released on DVD and Blu-ray and I believe the one I saw was the the director's cut or the Into the Call one, the Into the Call cut. Uh, I didn't see either of the uh, the director's editions or in th any additional footage editions. I just didn't want to revisit that aggravation. So. See, I didn't see. I didn't see it in theaters at all. Okay. So I went in with no expectations of the movie, I guess, or after the whole shit storm happened. But honestly, I I like the movie. Like it's not you know a cinematic masterpiece, but I thought it was fun. You know, it was its own interpretation of the Ghostbusters mythos, and you know you can say it stands in its own universe because you know we're you know we can have parallel universes, and that's its own thing. You yeah, know, I, I, could, liked, I could I could agree with you on that. Um. And there were some fun things I liked. Oh, what's her name's uh, Kate McKinnon's character. Uh, uh, the the short hair blonde, kind of the Egon of the group. Oh yeah, uh, she. I think she's one of the pluses, and I think uh, the main I, lead was okay too. Uh, Jenny McCarthy. I think that's that's who it was. She's playing and, Cheetah. I think she's playing Cheetah now in the new Wonder Woman movie. Hmm. I think yeah. that's her name. That's who it is. And uh, even though personally, I had a lot of nuanced problems with the movie but I, I'll agree with you that overall as a standalone film it might be okay <laughs> uh, it, it just didn't really thrill me for it but yeah, that's fine uh, just but that we do know that the, the new film as far as what you know Jason Reitman's saying it's going back to that universe right. he's pretty much confirmed that you know, and we, you know, fans have been clamoring for, you know, Ghostbusters 3 for 
what, 30 years now? Uh, yes, they have, but I'll, again, this I'll agree with a friend of mine. We did, in essence, get a Ghostbusters 3. With the Ghostbusters video game. That and, uh, uh, to kind of clarify another friend of mine, we got several sequels attached to that universe. And one of which is the video game, of course. And the other is the, the cartoon, plus the comics. Mm-hmm. So, uh, this is, you could say, an official movie sequel to that universe. Whether right. it ties into the video game or the comics, we won't really know. Uh, right now, from what I've been seeing and hearing, uh, Jason Reitman is playing a lot of things close to his chest. And that could be a good thing, so it minimizes a lot of the trolls and the that the possible fan outrage if it's not going exactly how they seem it to be, which could be a good thing. Um, I'm hoping in regards to the original cast, at least Aykroyd, it seems like Dan Aykroyd is going to be a part of it, of this. That's almost confirmed. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, whether or not Bill Murray and... Uh, What's his name? Plays Winston's going to be a part of it. Uh, he's Ernie Hudson. Urge, Ernie Hudson. Uh, he said he hasn't been approached yet for in regards to the script. So mm-hmm. good chance he will be because right. he's been kind of itching to go back to it or not. He's been itching right. more so, but he just said he hasn't been approached yet. So and they and they may just be finalizing the script details before they say. You know, here's what we have for you. Here's your offer. Right. And uh, folks at home, please uh, note that when it comes to movies that are uh, being played close to the chest like this, and there's been many in the past, that actors and actresses are sometimes have to sign NDAs or non-disclosure agreements. So Ernie could be saying, hey, they haven't approached me yet. Yet they could have already done that, and he's just signed an NDA. So we don't know until more information comes out or, quote-unquote, gets leaked, uh, which includes set photos, uh, a new trailer, new teaser. They could be waiting until E3 for all we know. So, And that's usually when the big hype train starts. So, mm-hmm. Although we are a couple of weeks away from one of the biggest newsworthy days of the year uh we're a couple weeks away from the super bowl which right. now a lot of us don't care about the actual football game but we do care about things like movie trailers that are going to get dropped correct so, so that so i'm definitely looking forward to see what trailers drop that day you know i'm i'm pretty sure we're gonna get like a good um and it that avengers endgame trailer you're probably going to get like the a good one there. Rumor has it we're getting four trailers for the new Star Wars movie. Mm-hmm. So, uh, folks at home, please duck and cover, especially internet-wise, the best you can, because there might be a lot of fan outrage. And I've been hearing uh, a lot of folks in the Star Wars community uh, raging against Ryan Johnson over uh, a few lies, what they're calling a few lies that he's been saying on Twitter. So I don't know too much what's going on. I might report it next week because I want to find out more information and see what happens when the dust settles. Because that's the best way to do things sometimes. Uh, granted, it makes us the last ones to report on it, but it helps us shift, sift through all the details and find out what exactly is happening before we make our own opinion. So mm-hmm. I, I don't know if Randy could agree with me on that or not. But Oh, no, it'll definitely be interesting to see what comes out of that. I mean, I'm looking forward to the Star Wars movie because I have liked the modern the the newest trilogy because i kind of call that my trilogy because i was born after the original three movies air all came out in theaters because i think return of the jedi came out like 82 so that was still slightly before my time that was still a couple years before me and then i just could not get into the the prequel trilogy it just 
well, for whatever reason, just nothing in that in the prequels resonated with me. But I have loved everything so far. Force Awakens, Last Jedi, like they've whatever it is, they've known exactly how to make their moves, play it, you know, give all the big emotional moments, and I'm calling that. I'm calling those my Star Wars movies. I know a few people that could disagree with you on that, but I'm not here to be one of those people. (laughs) Uh, uh, For what it was, I will say Last Jedi was somewhat entertaining, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, (laughs) uh, But to kind of continue, uh, how much are you into comic books or in regards to that, I want to. I'm trying to gauge for the next topic. Mm. Uh, actual comic books hasn't been something I have followed a lot, okay. especially like Marvel, DC. It, anything I do follow tends to be more like IDW stuff with their licensed properties, like GI Joe, Transformers, and even so, those have not been good lately. Have you been hearing the news that the comic books? Uh, recently have been on a decline. I think the first reports I've seen about it was c- stemming from Diamond Distributor Distribution Company that the numbers are on a, somewhat of a decline on at least the DC side with their mm-hmm. layoffs. Uh, at least 25 people... Uh, no, not 25. Wrong number, folks. I'm, I'm correcting myself right here, right now. Uh, seven people have been laid off for starters from DC um, mm. because of the decline Diamond stated that they might be uh, forcing some of the uh, uh, manufacturers, the, the companies Marvel, DC, maybe IDW to re- increase their prices again mm. due to this decline to help them make up money uh, which affects people, someone like yourself that might buy a lot of IDW comics mm-hmm. so right, now I know Although that makes sense, though, because I have heard stories about DC slashing several titles recently. I know, I I believe it was DC, but uh, several of their titles are going to be ending within the next couple of months. Yeah, I've heard the same thing, too. It, it, which ti- I think they're going to keep a lot of their most popular titles, of course. It's right. just a lot of the stuff that has not been hitting well. Uh, I think... A lot of pe- it's kind of what I said once before is that most of the people, most of the fans now, might be pulling away from the major comic book companies and going towards the independent route, which you might see more so at conventions and Artist Alley and the Kickstarter routes. So who knows what exactly right. is going to happen and how the overall comic book culture will change. There have been. Um, The bubble in the comic book world has burst several times in the past 10, 20 years. And that's really cyclical for any industry. Film industry, uh, you know, TV, really any form of media is going to go through cycles. Now, I haven't actually seen this story. Now, these number declines, are these just for print media comics or is this like across all avenues, like the digital platforms, Comixology? Um, I don't know about Comixology, but I did. I, it's one of the things I wanted to bring up. I just couldn't find the article or any notes that I had on it. Is that uh, I know I think Marvel, if not DC, is putting a lot of digital comics. And they've mm-hmm. signed a deal with Comixology that to give them more. Uh, books or, or titles I'm not familiar with comicsology but they have signed over a lot of digital rights to comic mm-hmm. comicsology and it was like 23,000 titles uh, and that could be a good thing so the digital market could be there I think it's more so the print market so okay. it's, it's one of the things that it uh, folks like myself even though I don't really collect physical comics anymore due to uh, the price but if when I go to a show, I might pick up an independent book every now and again. But it's something right. to keep an eye on. I know. I've been kind of in the mindset of moving, a, not collecting a lot of comic books because I have other things I collect that are that I put a higher priority on. Because I know both the bulk of my collecting is going to be modern modern Transformers 
and then when we're between waves, I'm going back and collecting vintage G.I. Joe to kind of fill out some of those ranks. So that's usually where a lot of my collecting money is going right now. So I'm like, eh, comics, they're not a high priority for me. I keep hearing about uh, the Transformers market, collectible market, um, and I haven't heard too much about the G.I. Joe market. Please uh, kindly inform me and thus our listeners about these two markets. How are they overall performing now? I know I've seen, as okay. someone, uh, to give an example, uh, I tend to at least a little bit uh, peek into the, the production animation cell market, and it's starting to go a little bit. Some of the stuff that has, in recent years, gone down is starting to go back up. Uh, how is both these markets doing now? And kind of fill us in a little bit. Well, right now, I mean, Transformers is still one of the the bank brands for Hasbro. You know, there, there are constant new lines... Um, they're still at, actually, I don't know what they're doing in terms of animation. Actually, I think a new series just started this year. Um, so the market is still great on that. G.I. Joe right now is kind of a deadline. There hasn't been new product in about three years. And the last animated property to go on TV was the Renegade series from... And that was still a good five, six years ago now. Plus, unfortunately, it's hard to market G.I. Joe in the, co- in the modern market. Especially when people are trying to move away from the war brands. Yeah, you don't really seem too much of... Uh, I think G.I. It's nothing against the G.I. Joe market, but it was when they first came out in... I want to, they. I think they came out in the late sixties, but the boom was in the eighties, uh, mm-hmm. with the that the cartoon. And during that time, it was the uh, America fuck uh, fuck yeah type generation. You know, right. it was gotta support America. It was us versus the Russians during that right. time. Right. Th- this is the heart of the Cold War too. Right. And in the modern war setting, post nine eleven, your 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 Iraq Afghanistan era, it's it's people are more shying away from you know like toy lines or thing other media properties that glorify war. It's a much different climate than it was in the eighties, so it makes something like a GI Joe harder to market. And not to mention, right right now, it's more so superhero movies and mm-hmm. maybe some of the super, superhero action figures or statues. Mm-hmm. Um, but then again, that depends on who you talk to. But I can understand where, what you're coming from in regards to that. Right, because th- there's also the, the fear of the market backlash. You know, when you put in, you know, when you put out these kind of products... There's always that chance that, you know, you'll get the the parent groups and go, oh, you know, this is war. This is not good. Why are you teaching our kids this? Yeah, why why do you want our kids to learn about guns and fighting? And, oh, by the way, let's watch this uh, news program about war and fighting. And, like, really? (laughs) That's me personally. It's just like, wait a minute, you're showing your kids superhero movies that's filled with war and fighting, but superheroes, right? But Yeah, and it's also kind of a hard, like, some of the stuff is getting harder to cosplay at conventions, too. Like, G.I. Joe, a lot of your war-type video games are getting harder to cosplay because because of the ever-growing weapons policies. Right. And the cracking out- now, let me just say this. I do not... Uh, I completely uh, appreciate what The Finest does in regards to their charity work for... I think it was... What did they do last year in regards to uh, veteran dogs? I think it was. Yes. The K- the ch- charity that they benefit is called Canines for Warriors. So across the entire finest, which has garrisons across the world, you know, all over the U.S., I believe it was a total of $27,000 they raised and gave to that program. 
I said, I'm not knocking uh, the, the fundraising that uh, The Finest does. Uh, definitely not. Folks, even I, I tend to share out when the campaign starts. I tend to share out the, the link. It, they're... I think if I go to AwesomeCon this year, mostly as a ticket holder if I go, uh, I'm sure as hell I'll probably be stopping by the booth and picking up a patch. So, don't... I do support. <laughs> uh, I'll probably be seeing Joe if she's going and everything else. It, it, you guys are, in regards to that campaign, are doing great work. So, I cannot deny or say, how dare you. So... Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, a lot of times it does come down to the individual cons. You know, some are, you know, especially in the smaller shows, some are easier to work with. Right. You know, especially if you're upfront about what you're doing, you know, hey, we're doing this. We'd like to bring these props in. You know, yeah, and, and they'll go back, hey, you know, can you at least make sure they're to within this standard? You know, make sure you've got the orange tips, peace bond them, you know, whatever. Yeah. I'm I'm sure if I spoke to Matt right now, or if he was a part of, or the folks behind Forest State, they'd be like, yeah, as long as you have the orange, you know, everything's safety first, and they're non-functional, they got the orange tip, and they're, everything is safe and legit, it's, come on in, you know, as long as you're doing it for uh, uh, a good cause, it's no problem, but it's the larger ones that have that vice grip against things right so. the the zero tolerance because i actually ran into that at megacon last year um i had one of my airsoft pistols with me but i had already peace bonded it and i which i actually don't even know where it was but the actual magazine for it i didn't even have it, it like there was literally a big gaping hole in the bottom of the of the grip they took one look and it went nope Ugh. like it was clearly you know modified to the point where it couldn't shoot anything and they went nope i had awesome con this was two th this is the last time i went i i have a plastic poster tube that i have with a strap that everybody tends to use they were like we well, need to weapons check that why it's a poster tube well, you could be carrying a sword in there. Does it look like an atypical person that would be carrying around a sword in a poster tube? Really? Well, we want you to check uh, check it at weapons check. Oh man! And people wonder why I have I'm not w fully welcome at AwesomeCon as media. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I put in my press application for Awesome fo Awesome Con, folks. Complete with sarcasm, yeah. <laughs> and that they were they the part of their questionnaire is like, uh, what are your numbers? I know I'm um, hating. It's like my numbers are. Oh, why am I even? And I literally typed it out in that little qu part of the question. Why am I even bothering? You're not going to approve me anyway because my name is not Chris Hardwick, Joe Rogan, Matt Pat, and I just went on a small little tirade, just belittling them, and I just went to the next question. <laughs> Oh, what? Watch, watch! I'm gonna get. You've been approved for a press pass for Awesome Con. Mother <laughs> sucking. <laughs> that that would be the whole thing. It's like this hate Phil rant. Like, yeah, you're not. Uh, despite all I'd done for Otacon and that, it was, that was part. It's like, yeah, Otacon accepted me, and I tossed out before they accepted me to, as a press in their cons, I tossed out hate for them, and they accepted me. So. <laughs> oh, man. But. Oh, always a fun topic, but. Uh, so let's move on to an, maybe a more fun news story. There's been okay. some speculation this week on um, maybe what the, P the upcoming Picard series is going to focus on. Uh, I haven't uh, heard too much about that. If you know more than I do, please elaborate. So, basically, there's kind of been some speculation, and little bits and pieces have been thrown out. I believe Jonathan Frakes actually made a tweet where he said, um, basically, Picard is not going to be a captain. And we've heard little bits where uh, the timing is this is about 20 years after the movie Nemesis. Okay, that that was, and, that was cool some jets in regards to fans. <laughs> right. As far as we know, this is prime timeline. And this is after the events of Nemesis. 
And there's speculation that it may actually tie into the events of the JJ universe, um, because this is going, it's going to be post-destruction of Romulus. And theoretically, um, it's obviously going to be a very different time in Picard's life. He's going to be a changed man, which, because when you look at some of the canon media, he does have very deep connections to Romulus. Obviously, he had that clone son, played by Tom Hardy, who was, you know, part Romulan. Of course, um, his connection to Spock and the work he was doing to try to reunify um, the Vulcan and Romulan people. That be the so, case, depending on where this... It'll probably fall on uh, the CBS app, like Discovery. Uh, if that's right. true, screw you, CBS. Screw you in your ear. Uh, because, strictly speaking, I'm not paying you $10 a month for one stinking, ep one stinking show. No. Not... Right. No. And unfortunately, the everything goes up weekly for that. It's not at a time. So you can't just pay for like one month right. and then just binge the whole series. I mean, I guess you could do that once the season finale airs. And how CBS uh, deals with their whole uh, series with whether or not they keep all up on their web the website or app or they just leave up five at a time. But Good chance since this is online only, and it's their version of CW Seed. Uh, therefore, you know what? Still, I'm not going to watch. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, have, I have you caught, seen? Have you I've watched caught, Discovery? Yes. On, okay. I watched. I watched the first season. It it started as a dumpster fire. Okay. It got a little bit better. Is at least throughout the first season, a lot of the characters are just insufferable. The main character, especially Michael Burnham, she is absolutely intolerable. So she's worse than uh, Captain Janeway. Oh. <laughs> now, I'm making you choose captains. How dare I, right? <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, I, so far, first two episodes of season two, a lot better. A lot of a lot of the cast members are definitely finding their groove, and they're finding little things with their characters that are making them more likable. So, did anybody grow a beard? What? Did anybody grow a beard in the second seat for the second season? Yeah. Yes, I'm Not making a I'm making a uh, next generation. Oh, the Riker too. joke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but uh, but so far, season two has not been a dumpster fire. It's actually been enjoyable. I must ask: Is with the C because you're watching this on the CW app? Is there commercials, or is it commercial free? Well, when I'm watching it, I'm not seeing commercials. Okay. I'm uh, I'm kind of watching it with Uncle Joe. Okay. Uh, so for the folks at home, um, Randy knows Uncle Joe, and uh, Uncle Joe is friends with Uncle Tony. And they tend to both get the programs off the back of a truck. So there you go. That that explains the Uncle Joe reference for all you out there. So yeah, that's an old school slacker the man reference for anyone still over from that crew. <laughs> um, I think the only person that might get a reference to that is either you and probably Dobbs if he occasionally listens. Uh, and it's the reason why I I didn't want to rip off uh, Slack on the man in regards to Uncle Joe. So I went, okay, we're mafia themed, so it's got to be Uncle Tony. So, <laughs> and, and I, I'm sure as hell that Dobbs and the man don't really care and they appreciate the kind of the the parody reference anyway. So. Yeah, so, I mean, I'll definitely keep up with it, but right now I've got one show I have to watch every week, and I can't wait to watch every week, and that is The Orville. I like the first episode I've seen of season one. I have to, I kind of just was watching other things, and I, me, sometimes, I get the distraction of, oh, look, a squirrel, and or something shiny comes on, and I just lose track. And it looked like it was a, a very good uh, show to begin with, and it from a lot of Star Star Trek fans, it was like, yeah, I'd rather watch Orville than the new Discovery thing. Mm hmm. Right. Because initially, when the show came out, a lot of people were afraid that 
oh, this is just going to be Family Guy in space. But it's not. Right. I actually saw a picture of a shirt um, that says Trekorama on it. And it's the Orville cast drawn in the Futurama style. And literally my brain went, you know, that is actually a more fair comparison to make than Family Guy. Yeah, true. I, I could agree with that. Because and- Futurama is a very funny show, but when it needs to be serious and emotional, it will gut punch you. Oh, yeah. As a fan of, of Futurama, oh, yeah, I could agree with that. And so- that's really the Orville. It has its funny moments. It has its Seth MacFarlane humor. But that's but it's not an hour of Seth MacFarlane jokes in space. There are actual stories. There's actual character development. And there, these are actually good Star Trek stories. And they're taking on, you know, crazy modern societal issues in Star Trek ways. Um, um, meaning it, it, it's kind of like how Star Trek used to be. In a way. And they deal with some topics you cannot... Like, it might have been hard to deal with on just a regular Star Trek on TNG. Um, I'm not going to go into any specific details, but one of the season two episodes deals with porn addiction in an actual very good, you know, like, kind of at the same time funny but serious way. It somehow... Because we know Seth MacFarlane is a huge Star Trek fan. Right. And he has definitely taken his time to craft an amazing series. And it pays complete respect to Star Trek. Right. And the thing is, that that's what kind of uh, a lot of sci-fi, good sci-fi movies and shows tend to do, is uh, if you have a great writer like Seth MacFarlane can do, is that they have to create a complete universe for mm-hmm. their show to successfully thrive. And... Um, to go back a little bit, have you heard anything in regards to the Star Trek Discovery's lawsuit, uh, plagiarism lawsuit that they've been having? Or have no, you heard about that? I don't think I've heard about this at all. Oh, you didn't hear about that? Oh. oh. Um, basically, from what I've heard, first off, are you drinking beer on my program? This would be a nice, crisp, delicious can of Diet Mountain Dew. Okay. <laughs> you can drink beer. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> uh, just that what I've been hearing is that there was this guy that created a a game several years prior to Star Trek uh, Discovery even being created. And mm-hmm. it had uh, tardigrades. It had... Uh, all these set pieces and come to find out when Star Trek Discovery was starting up and all their character designs and all the things that they were doing in the first season matched this game par for par from uh, certain characters using uh, enlarged tardigrades to power their vessels to get from point A to point B. It was completely complete plagiarism uh, almost par to par and it wasn't like um, basically I'm sure you heard all the old school stories about DS9 and Babylon 5 hmm. uh, basically f- for the folks at home who haven't heard this old story is that J.M. Uh, J. Marco Straczynski initially went to Paramount in regards to selling his new show Babylon 5 a few hmm. years before it even started. Oh, and right. Paramount turned them down. Th- like two or three years later, along comes this new show called Star Trek DS9, which paralleled a lot of his storylines. And hmm. then maybe a, two years once it started, JMS sold his uh, Babylon 5 through a uh, independent network. I think it was Primetime Entertainment Network and got that syndicated. That's why you kind of saw a lot of rivalry between DS9 and Babylon 5. If you watched uh, the, both shows at the same time like I did, yeah, I was a nerd back in the mid to late 90s mm-hmm. and still kind of am. And JMS, when people approached him saying, why didn't you go after uh, Power Mount and you know Star Trek in regards to DS9 he said well if I wanted to work with them ag- 
sometime in the future, me not really saying anything kind of so keeps the even playing ground mm-hmm. uh, for me to go to them with a future project. And if you read between the lines, it's a way you could say in a way it's like me going. It's like if I have a new thing, it's like uh, Paramount. You know that whole DS9 thing you took off me a few many years ago? Yeah, I didn't say anything. Let's talk. <laughs> yeah, that's almost his way of saying that. But whether or not how true it is, who knows? There could have been a lot of backdoor deals in regards to payoffs, <laughs> but who knows? Uh, but that was his story, and I guess he still sticks to it to this day. But it, it's still... It, this time, this person in regards to the video game and Star Trek Discovery, uh, I don't know if anything... I haven't heard too much about that, uh, the lawsuit, the plagiarism lawsuit in regards to it. Right. It comes to the surface every now and again, and it just kind of... I don't hear too much. It's the same story I keep hearing about. It's like, I need new information about this. What's going on? Uh, nothing's come ahead to it. I'm like, well, mm-hmm. I guess it all depends on who's going to run out of cash first, so... Right. Okay. Uh, to kind of uh, anything else about Star Trek that you want to talk about? <laughs> I know we got off no. on a tangent. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, not. I'm not aware of any news news stories beyond that. I mean. Okay. I mean, you know me. I could talk Star Trek all damn day. <laughs> we might have you do that one of these days. So, and I'll, I'll extend that offer on air right now, folks. If you're listening, to, I'm telling this to Randy. If you want to talk about Star Trek for half hour or an hour uh you have the mic just grab audacity record something and say hey i want some you know i want a, uh, an episode to myself talking about star treks talking about gi joe talking about transformers you're more than welcome to do so uh just let just let me know that you're going to do it and you could google drive it or however you want to send it to me and i'll i'll be more than happy to post it up for you all right all right and I'll give you, you know, I'll give you the ta- the tags, Geek World Order tags and directions to your site, Facebook page, and all that, too. So, you know I'm going to do that for you. The offer's oh, absolutely. On the, table. the offer's on the table if you want to do that. If you want to do uh, an episode or anything like that uh, beyond your uh, uh, your website, uh, I'm here for you to help you out for that. I know, I'm sure Dobbs will probably offer the same thing because you're a friend of his, too, but... I can't speak for Dobbs. I can speak for at least my show. You're more than willing to do that here. I, because of, hey, you're more than willing to do it. You're, you've you been cool to the show, and I'm willing to be cool right back with you and extend that offer to you. All right, no problem. And to kind of move on, uh, all right. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to skip over that little bit of news and the, um, the other news. I'll save the other two things I've been... For my co-host, let him rant and rave about that. You hear that, Big Candy? I have stuff for you to rant and rave about. So, and I'm going to be saving it. So, I know he listens to my show. So, uh, okay, let's go to because we kind of talked about it a little bit early, hinted to it. Um, we had new kind of two bits of news back to back over the past week or so first off was netflix raising its rates across the board for about two bucks and which uh some people have kind of said like if they when they do this they're going to jump ship um but here's the but uh which this week i think was like maybe within the past 48 hours of this show's recording uh hulu stepped up to the plate and said you know what we're going to reduce our base plan rates by two bucks. How ballsy is that? Now, granted, some of their upper tier plans uh, to kind of balance out this kind of loss uh, have increased their prices maybe about a buck or two, but their base plan, uh, Hulu's base plan, has been reduced by yeah. by two dollars. Uh, it as an entry point, that's brilliant. That's a way of saying, hey, hey. You guys are sick, sick of Netflix? Come here. We got a base plan for you. Uh, you know, it. you're saving $2. It, instead of spending $8, $8 you know, you're spending 6 Come on. Come here. Come here. Come here. Uh, uh-huh. come here. You, when, you want to know my response to that? What? 
uh, Hulu, I ain't paying for commercials, so no. <laughs> uh, to me, I don't mind too much about the commercials, but for a lot of folks... It, I think what's worse is when you have a Hulu plan and you get the commercials and you're binge-watching a show, it's the same three commercials. Oh, uh, that's what I hate. So, no. Hate. So, no, Hulu. It, uh, you either get some more commercials or you just charge whatever you need to charge to eliminate commercials. Uh, yeah, it... Um for a person on a budget, what I what I enjoy, I la when I saw that my base plan, the plan that I've been paying for at Hulu, will be reduced by two dollars. I was like, you know what? Thank you, Hulu, for paying for my Netflix increase, because <laughs> here it is, my base plan got increased by about a dollar to two dollars, and the other plan got reduced by two dollars. So I'm not paying any more out of pocket. <laughs> so thank you Hulu for paying my extra phone you know <laughs> but since I only watch a few TV shows on Hulu as it is I, I don't really mind the same three commercials but it's the same three annoying commercials and yeah they're, they're not to, even good commercials yeah that's number one and, and number two is like somehow I get feminine hygiene, pro hygiene products and perfume and Geico ads I'm like Really, this is what you're putting on, like, classic episodes of Knight Rider? Really? Yeah. I think the last time I binge-watched anything on Hulu, it was, like, the same toothpaste commercial just over and over. Yeah. And literally one, one commercial break, it was three commercials. It was the same commercial run three times consecutively. Yeah, and it's like, come on, I want to see something new. I get better ads on YouTube. If I see them, and that's weird for YouTube. Yeah, YouTube, where you could see a five-minute ad for a three-minute video. Congratulations to YouTube. Yeah, and I I don't use YouTube on my phone for that reason. I, I only on. I only watch YouTube on desktop because I've got ad blocker on Chrome. I just watch it on my console, and I don't see that many uh, ads as it is on my console. <laughs> um. Speaking of, great, that's a great segue. Uh, did you hear what's going on with YouTube right now? Oh, what now? Uh, basically, they're releasing, I guess, either right now or over the next couple of days, a new algorithm. I'm going to use air quotes for that because it's screwed up anyway. Um, I'm getting real sick of algorithms. Yeah, uh, you and me both. But this YouTube algorithm is, they're going after conspiracy theorist channels hmm. as a whole now basically what this algorithm is going to do is because the reason why they're installing this is because they got a lot of complaints from people saying that these conspiracy theory channels are coming up on their recommendations list when mm -hmm. it shouldn't and so they decided to create a algorithm that pushes down these conspiracy theory channels uh, so, for the most part, you're not going to see uh, videos. It's primarily gunning for, from what they said, uh, channels that are false, false claiming things. Like, uh, if you drink this fluid, it'll cure cancer type things. The, the bad snake oil remedy type channels, um, flat earth channels, and channels that uh, placate towards... Uh, that make, according to them, make false claims about historical events like 9-11. And a lot of other people, you're, you're starting to hear people say, well, if this is going to cover those channels, what about other channels like Bigfoot, uh, Skywalker Ranch, U, uh, UFOs, uh, Ghosts? Yeah, these are all the channels that are going to be suppressed. They're going to still be there, just that they're not going to be recommend, recommended anymore. Um it's again it's bad enough that videos on YouTube are barely monetized as it is unless your name is Jimmy Kimmel, Alan DeGeneres, uh Fox News, CNN, uh these higher end major cable networks mm. that, you know, and TV shows that can get away with murder and put their clips online but yet you can't say have your personal channel monetized. 
Not right. to mention, you, you can no longer curse on your channel or get feared to. Uh, you could say darn and hooligans, but you can't say the popular curse words due to the fact that you won't, your channel, if it is monetized, won't get monetized for that video if you use curse words as, as it is. So. Yeah. That was one. That was a, okay. That's a rule I actually had not heard about. What the cursing? Yeah, that that, was, that, that was within one? the next couple. Yeah, that was within the past few days as well, uh, because ah. I've heard a lot of YouTubers saying that they're kind of pissed that even though that they've cursed uh, a few times on their some of their videos, that they've said only darn or dang or damn and that algorithm has dinged them and demonetized their uh videos mm -hmm. uh just for sometimes i there might have been one or two that said hey the only word i said on my channel is hell oops i guess this video is getting demonetized as well because i said the word hell and you see a lot of channels now that are getting beep. They're beeping their curse words because they don't want their videos to get dinged in any way, shape, or form. Ah. Uh. So it's there's more and more hoops that or that a lot of the channels are jumping through right now, and it's again one of the main reasons why you still see a lot of YouTubers leaning heavily on Patreon which people are leaving in droves as well from what i'm hearing in regards to that too so hmm. and it's not the youtubers leaving in droves it's the people that are uh for those of you who are not familiar with patreon is patreon is this website that is uh, how do i best describe this they have the allows youtubers and uh internet mod uh, female models to Put uh, have tiered plans like mm -hmm. uh, a doll Like if it's your average YouTuber, let's say uh, Randy has uh, a Patreon for his uh, for Geek World Order. There's a dollar tier, which is sp you get a, a general special thanks. Uh, a five dollar tier, you get your name put somewhere as a on the page. Uh, a ten dollar tier gives you the chance uh, there'll be a rent. This is I'm just. Giving, using Geek World Order as an example, a ten dollar tier will give you. Randy will do a uh, special drawing for someone to do an article on their favorite cosplayer on the site, uh, stuff like that, and which helps uh, Randy have income for that site and help maintain it for uh, yearly to buy the site, make sure the site is in working order, uh, and everything else. Or for YouTubers and podcasters like myself, it helps keeps the lights on, helps afford new equipment if they need a green screen or uh, if they do convention reviews. It allows them to go to new conventions and so forth and so on, and possibly pay rent and earn an income. If they're the internet models, they could offer up some sort of sexy version of whatever whatever they're doing, whether it's a, a sexy Bowserette or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I know but, Patreon just got hit recently with new rules because I believe yeah. they just put up rules regarding the adult content. Yeah, that was uh, some of it. That was maybe Which, a few. Go ahead. Yeah, it was like right before the Tumblr rules came out. Right. But basically, Patreon started banning accounts that outright offered adult pornographic content as rewards. Yeah, but for well, the majority of the people that are offering... Uh, Taste, I want to say tasteful nudes. Uh, they're still up, but from they'll they'll be caught eventually. Yeah, they'll it'll eventually get to them. But right now, uh, from what I've seen, a few people that I know that cosplay are still putting up seductive stuff or tasteful nudes every now and again. I know one or two cosplayers that are doing that. I don't know how many you know on your end. Uh, I know one YouTuber that puts some uncensored uh, challenges up on her Patreon uh, in regards to it. I haven't seen it. I don't partake in Patreon in any way, shape, or form yet. There might be a Patreon for our show, but I'm not sure what to offer other than thanks yet. But... Um, the reason why a lot of people are leaving in throw uh, huge numbers is because um, I think uh, 
Uh, I'm not sure who successfully. Uh, I know Jordan Peterson left. Sargon of Akkad finally got uh, tossed off of Patreon uh, because of something he said on a podcast. I don't, I'm not sure the details and the drama behind that. Uh, so he got tossed off of Patreon. Patreon said, "Well, we had enough." And I guess said, "I had enough of your shit. You're gone." Uh, so people decided, "Oh, you banned, you know, Sargon." So we're going goodbye. And friends of those friends said, "You know what? Because my friend's no longer on Patreon, we're going too." So a lot of people are leaving Patreon for whatever reason. And the higher, from what I heard, a lot of the higher earners on Patreon are leaving. So, mm-hmm. because of a lot of uh, BS that P- Patreon is doing as well. So, and once that happens, yeah, Patreon is not going to look that good. So, mm-hmm. I, okay. I, I try to keep my ear to the ground in regards to some things, but it's just I'll let the tide roll in and I'll see what's left afterwards and I'll pick up the pieces and I'll see if I could do a deep dive on it one of these days but oh um, are you into wrestling at all yes I am okay uh, then let's talk Ronda Rousey um, uh, how how much wrestling have you watched I've got because I'm a casual observer of wrestling I've known Ro- Ronda Rousey is I think she's been relatively popular lately since her emergence uh, about a year ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she, I, I take it she's still relatively a popular. I uh, think she's a heel now, or is she a baby face? Um, I think right now she's technically a face. It's just because of the the back and forth stuff she's had with Becky Lynch, especially the, all the Twitter stuff. People are gravitating more towards Becky because they just they just love her, you know, her badass persona. So she's so Rhonda's kind of a, a quasi quasi heel quasi face in a way. Not uh, really one. She's side technically or she's technically a face, but the the fans are booing her more. So but, at least she hasn't. Re, at least uh, from what you say, she hasn't. Um, Nothing against Roman Re- Reigns, but at least she hasn't achieved Roman Reigns levels of kind of uh, outright booze. It's more of the story. I take it it's more of the storyline booze that she's getting, right? Yeah. Okay. So, and that, I guess that, to me, that's a good thing. If it's a storyline boo, then overall, something's being done right. No, this this is not, this is not X-Pac heat. Yeah, the like, but what I'm saying is, it's a storyline boo, uh, mm-hmm. or meaning that you have two two characters in essence going after each other, and it's a uh, we're so, we as the uh, WWE audience or fandom we're we're siding with one, so we got we got to boo somebody. So it that that's different than uh, when Roman Reigns was part of the WWE. And they're just booing him because they didn't like him. They didn't like his character. They didn't like the, how he was being pushed. They didn't like the overall aspect of Roman Reigns. It's just more or less <laughs> what's going on in the storyline and the interaction between these two wrestlers that they're booing. You know, you know the goal, they, they have that back and forth. <laughs> so it, that's that's the good thing. That's what I like and. It's not like the fun of people just booing John Cena just for the sake of let's boo John Cena because it's mm-hmm. fun. Uh, but and now and now Roman Reigns can never be booed again. Yeah, uh, not I don't think fully because uh, he's in recovery. But right, if when Roman Reigns comes back and if you boo him, you're basically cheering for cancer. <laughs> uh, he he might get some boos, uh, but I. I can't really. It wouldn't be like we're booing for cancer, but we don't know how to react. We want to boo for <laughs> Roman Reigns, but we we can't boo for Roman Reigns. How dare you, Roman Reigns? We're booing. We'll boo Roman Reigns just for the sake of putting us into this predicament. Just just sit there respectfully and make no noise at all. <laughs> then the WWE would have to insert some sort of cheer or boo in reference to everything because. 
they'll be like, damn, we, we muted the audience because of the booze. Now we don't know what to do. What should we put in this dead air? Um, the SmackDown pop. <laughs> but uh, recently it's come out that uh, the article that I shared on the show's uh, my show's timeline was a little bit confusing because it said that her contract, in essence, Roman uh, Ronda Rousey's contract was almost up. Uh, but the thing is, it from what I heard, it's not up. She still has like another year or so to go. Right. That uh, yeah, I've seen conflicting reports on that. My buddy that where I work with, he he has his ear a little bit m- closer to the ground than I do because he still has a few. He knew about uh, Daniel Bryant winning uh, the title three months before he actually won it. That's how close his ear is to the ground. Um, but from what he was telling me that in regards to the article in reference to uh, sorting things out was WWE agreed to allow her time off to start a family. They corrected the article. According to him, it's like they corrected the article he heard. Uh, she could drop the title at WrestleMania to Becky Lynch. Uh, spoilers, folks. Uh, just in case, spoilers. Uh, but and we'll be gone for a little while. But we'll make appearances, then come back full time. Uh, he replied to that. He said uh, it was in her original contract negotiations with her three-year deal. So good chance because she is relatively pop popular. Mm-hmm. Um, she will be back. Uh, it's just a matter of time when she'll be back. And to what capacity? Uh, I think um, the Bella Twins are back f- uh, almost full time now, so uh, I haven't been following the WWE that much, and I'm sorry, folks. But I do like to include WWE content for the show for the sake of you out there that do follow WWE. So, right. And with that whole situation, um, I know in the past. Um I've read reports that WWE contracts can be sent. Um, basically, like if a wrestler gets injured, WWE would have the option to whatever amount of time they were out, add that to the end of their deal. So, so like if someone's gone with an injury for like three months, they, you know, to, to make sure they fulfill the contractual number of dates, could add like three months to the end of their contract as like an option. Right. Because I think that happened one time um, when Rey Mysterio left the company a few years ago. His his option, you know, his contract ended one date, but he had a lengthy injury, and WWE said, "No, we don't want to let you go. We're going to pick up the option, and you're going to be under contract until this point." Right. So it- which which a lot of those things could come more into play now. Now that you've got. All Elite Wrestling coming in. Maybe you guys want to leave for that or go to New Japan. It could be very interesting over the next year or so as things kind of start to develop in regards to that. Yeah, it, the, the WWE is a little bit weird and finicky uh, sometimes. In reg- uh, I know there has been drama. There's always drama, drama in the WWE. Uh in regards to certain things, it it all depends on uh, who it is, and that's why. Again, Joe, if you're listening, I wouldn't mind having you back on to talk WWE uh, because you have a lot more insider information than I do. Um, expe- especially if you do it completely in macho, uh, the tone of Macho Man. Uh, I want to see that. Um, I think it'll be a funny episode. Uh, just the WWE report, complete. Macho Man character, uh, it will be hysterical. I'll probably be laughing my ass off, but come on, it will be funny. <laughs> Especially if I if I could time it with my um, my co-host and he does it completely in a uh, big candy. I, I and Joe, we got to get on this and set up a uh, a recording for one Saturday. Uh, one of you's got to be a complete Hulk Hogan persona, and the other one's got to be a Macho Man Sapona, and just you know do the whole show like that. You can't break character. You can't break character. It could be the funniest thing ever. Ever. I I don't know how it'll work out, but we gotta do it. 
Although, so. with although um, as we are recording this show tonight, um, this weekend, of course, is the Royal Rumble. Um, the there's the NXT Takeover going on right now, or tonight, and um, I was actually kind of looking on Twitter. A couple of the wrestlers made some. There's some geeky Easter eggs in their attire. Uh, the match between Johnny Gargano and Ricochet for the North American Championship. Uh, apparently, Johnny Gargano's ring gear is themed after um, the current Ghost Rider, and then um, Ricochet has Miles, Mor- Miles Morales inspired, you know, Spider Man inspired gear on. Like, I, I, my buddy's a big fan. He was watching the NXT Takeover, and. His last post was about an hour ago with his comment saying, not only he keeps up with regards to uh, what match is happening and who won, uh, like I said, the last thing he got was maybe about an hour ago. He said, uh, what the fuck? I just lost sound from the pay-per-view. So uh, exactly what happened, I don't know. That that was his last post. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, oh, uh, he said, uh, his cat ran across his laptop and muted the site. That's why. Uh, <laughs> uh, so in, uh, that brings up memories. Uh, in regards to God, I'll say this: God rest his soul, Art Bell and his cat aspect is one of the things we're going to, talking about YouTube conspiracies, and it's what I loved about uh, Art Bell, him running his own radio station out of uh, Nevada. And one of the things episodes I was listening to, he said, uh, "Folks, uh, we just came back from the." Uh, commercial break and just to let you all know there were from this point on we're lucky to have a show because my cat just ran over the the soundboard and things would have went completely haywire because he missed a button by a quarter of an inch which would have shut the whole radio show down for about two hours i went whoa that's funny but it, that's just <laughs> me oh gee oh geez that that reminds me of, uh, uh, I was watching, uh, I think I was watching Wrestling with Regrets review of uh, WrestleMania 17. And he was talking about the match, the hardcore title match between, it was like Raven, Kane, and the Big Show. And there was a spot where they went backstage involving a golf cart. And apparently, when Raven was driving the golf cart, he almost hit like one of the main power transformers. And like, almost took out power to the entire building. Ugh, that would that like, would have been bad. Like, literally missed it by inches. That would have been bad. And Raven, to kind of quote the uh, Obi Wan meme, uh, that's a name I haven't heard in a very long time. So, <laughs> yes, I folks, uh, we had Star Trek and Star Wars in the same episode. And I'm going to be happy to click those two tags when I post up this episode on uh, Monday morning. Let's see. That, let's see here. Let's see what else can we talk about, folks. What has? Oh, um, do you watch Supernatural at all? Or nope. No? I, okay. I, I think I'm like halfway through the first season. Uh, how are you enjoying it so far, though? Oh, I don't know. I, ha- I don't think I've watched an episode in like two years. Oh, dang, nab you. <laughs> I started it and got like distracted by something else. Oh, uh, you had squirrel syndrome. <laughs> basically <laughs> so I, I, without any spoilers uh, they do uh, because I when I got first into uh, Supernatural uh, I liked what they were doing in regards to the monster of the week and it just didn't seem like uh, Sam and Dean at least actor wise they didn't behave as brothers but as the seasons went on you could see them getting more and more comfortable with each other and because the show has lasted 12 years, both actors have had family. Everybody in the show has had families or started families. And they've become, like, as a major family themselves. And they've acted more so like brothers on the show, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So it it's come a long way. The show does have its humorous moments. Uh, and it does have its kind of... Let me put it like this. It has some Riker's Beards moments, and it has some Jump the Shark moments. So, for the folks at home who don't understand Riker's Beard and Jump the Shark, let me quickly explain things for you. <laughs> uh, Jump the Shark it refers to an old classic show um, called Happy Days. The main character was called 
the Fonz, who was this cool biker guy, and they were kind of, at the time, hurting for ratings, so they had him jump a shark in order to kind of gain more viewers. I, I hear Randy typing away, so he's going to probably get the better definition than I am right trying to explain right now, but uh, basically, that's the moment a lot of folks have s stated that when a show starts to go downhill, they've jumped the shark. So, and the complete opposite to that is the Riker's beard scenario or the beard <laughs> scenario, it, because that refers to uh, between season one of uh, Star Trek: The Next Generation and season two of Star Trek: The Next Generation, for no reason, when the cliffhanger in season one happened and the start of the second season happened, William uh, Franks, that's uh, I, Jonathan is, Franks. Jonathan Franks grew a beard. There's no explanation for it, no rhyme and reason why he has a beard in the first episode of you know, continuing through that cliffhanger. Why he has a beard? Just that he has a beard. And well, no, there was there, no season one. It didn't end on a cliffhanger. It didn't. Nope, season two just started. It just started, and he just had uh, a beard. Yep, so he, the, just, the, he, he grew a beard over the... Yeah, yeah he, he, grew, said it. He, he grew a beard he, over the break, and there was no really in-show reason why he had a beard, just that he had a beard. And that season is when the sh a lot of fans have stated the show got better. So the joke, as we kind of alluded prior in the episode, Riker's beard is, you know, when a show starts to get better due to something ha the writer you know there's that cause that caused the show to get better so they call it the Riker's beard moment because See, the show got better writing wise because that's weird for me because really TNG didn't get better until season 3 well it started season to get better oh because I, I think season 2 was an absolute dumpster fire <laughs> mostly because I hate Pulaski that racist country bitch. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm going to go a little bit back on this. Uh, okay, there's one good episode in season two. Now, I'm going to say this. You know, we all know, both you and I know why, uh, folks, too bad there's no archive for it. Uh, because if there was, we'd I'd be more than happy to put links to it. Um, we're referring to Slacker and the Man, uh, defunct. Uh, if there's any rolling episodes out there uh, i'm sure i have a few lurking around somewhere uh but you and i both heard know why the man hates season two of next generation it's not because of it's a dumpster fire of a season it's because beverly crusher is not in it that's why oh yeah no her replacement is terrible Right. <laughs> That's why. And we both know that the man has a thing for Beverly Crusher. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> and it's Part of me wants to go on to uh, the man's personal page and lure him up to D.C. because uh, Miss uh, Crusher, the actress who plays Miss Crusher, and Mira Sirtis uh, are both being at AwesomeCon this year. And it's like, uh, you want to stalk a few people? So, I wish I had room. It's like, <laughs> I know it's like, they're having a whole mess of uh, Star Trek people up this year. So, I just hope they don't. And part of me is like, hey, I'm an uh, awesome con. I uh, hope you're listening to this. I hope you screw up again this year. You didn't last year, but I know you will this year. I hope you do. <laughs> so. And I'm going to keep bashing you until you give us a press pass. How about them apples? Why am I again? Why am I doing? We kept bashing Otacon, and they gave us a press pass. That that's why we don't don't we don't complain about Otacon anymore because they keep giving us a press pass. So <laughs> that's just me. I'll, <laughs> it's a plan that works. Mm -hmm. It's called reverse psychology, folks. That's why we keep calling ourselves the most hated podcast on the internet. Again, thank you, George Real. So, 
Uh, I, I think George Real, because he gives us a lot, or when we do the intro and the outro, he gives us our voice work for it. So I'm always happy to give him shout outs. So he's our voice of God. So we. <laughs> so uh, anything else? I, I've got. I went through my list. I don't have any more. All I've been seeing is a lot of stuff. Uh, let's see. People's Holy Stuff. No, no. Royal Rumble covered that. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, wait a minute. No. You watch any CW shows? Not right now. Okay. No, I don't want to cover that. We covered it last last time. I'm not going to cover it this time. Uh, I'm not going to be part of that dumb s- s- fire. Uh, basically, uh, folks, uh, Bill Maher still came out again and tripled he doubled down his comments on Stan Lee uh, recently he tripled down his comments on Stan Lee um, and this time including uh, Kevin Smith in his rant and Kevin Smith responded and it was just uh, he, he sp- Kevin Smith responded kindly that let me just put it like that he was he was a gentleman and a scholar and said pretty much said told uh, Bill Maher he's hung with him uh, smoked weed with Bill Maher, and he's a nice guy on, off show. And that's pretty much it. He was just a gentleman. And Kevin Smith being Kevin Smith, and folks at home, uh, from what I've been hearing, he, the reboot for the Kevin uh, Jalen Silent Bob movies is going fairly well and smoothly for the most part, from what I've been hearing. And that's all I know about that. Uh, let's see. Uh, a lot of stuff that we call up. Talked about prior, not talking about that, not talking about. Ooh, we are. No, wait a minute, we talked about that. What's this? Star Trek: The Next Generation episode might hold the key to it. Well, I got to pull up this article. Let's go through this. Uh, if you're willing to go through this, deep dive into this a little bit and, and do a live reaction, R- Randy, let's do it. All right. Uh, this is from Comic Book. Dot com. The title is Star Trek The Next Generation Episode May Hold the Key to Avengers Endgame Plot. Are you intrigued? I think I'm going to need a link to this. Okay, let me copy it and I'll send it to you so you can pull <laughs> it up yourself and follow along at home. <laughs> Let's pull this up here. Hopefully my phone doesn't want to be a dick. Sending the link through Messenger... Oh, come on, phone. Pull up, Messenger, will you? Folks, we're having weird technical difficulties. My phone is being an ass. Could be because it's about a year old and I need a new one. Paste and sending it to you. And All right. let's see what this fun little article states. Let me know when you're ready, Randy. All right, I'm there. Okay, now Facebook has to be a dick and delay reloading the page. Come on. Great, now i got to watch. It's going to reset on me. Uh, yes, it did. Now I gotta go down and find it again. <sighs> <laughs> I hate it when Facebook does this, this stupid crap. Oh, oh, there it is. Okay, now it's loading up. It's my turn to wait. Okay. Um, article states Marvel fans think the series finale of Star Trek: The Next Generation may hold clues to about the plot of Avengers Endgame. Uh, there's been speculation that the fourth Avengers film will be influenced by Star Trek's The Next Generation's conclusion, final episode, all good things. <sighs> to summarize, they're, they're thinking um, time travel, and it, this kind of, just by glancing it, um, it's what I've been hearing that Miss Marvel is going to be the key to the t- whole time travel mess. Mm-hmm. And. If it is, this concept was good for Star Trek The Next Generation. Now, let me say it like that. That concept was very well written uh, because it involved two main central characters, Q and Picard. Mm-hmm. That's what made it so well. This has too many characters that need, which was good for uh, Infinity War, might not be good for this type of format if you can understand hmm. what I'm talking about because it, it if they're focusing strictly on Iron Man because it's focus, they want, it says here, so the Avengers will be battling Thanos or whoever they will battle simultaneously in different timelines. Could this 
be Cap in America, Natasha and Ant-Man confronting Than Thanos in 2012. New York, remember, Thanos is behind New York's alien invasion, while Thor and the Guardians search for Thanos and the snapped Avengers in the present, and Iron Man saves Pepper Potts and their kid in the future. Th that's too many plot lines to, in my opinion, to work out instead of how it kind of was mm -hmm. in, in Avengers. Right. It, I mean, it, I could see the thing of, like, going through different... Because I believe they're, they've pretty much confirmed there is a time-traveling element. Because I believe it also has something to do with Ant-Man. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, it, if they do things right, I, I, I want to see a trailer. Hopefully, we'll get a, at least some sort of trailer in, in the Super Bowl. That's almost guaranteed. Um Good chance. Oh yeah, that's going to be Marvel's big one. Yeah, it, yeah. No, if there's no trailer for Endgame during the Super Bowl, that's just going to be odd. Marvel fans will be pissed. Uh, mm -hmm. Football fans will be pissed because there's going to be probably uh, way too many uh, trailers for geeky stuff in their uh, their football game. It, it's going to be how dare you get peanut butter in our gel in our chocolate. Uh, and yeah, how dare you get football in my movie trailers? Right, <laughs> uh, but you'll have a few geeks actually watching the game. Hopefully, uh, I'll be in at the local uh, pizza pizzeria nearby uh, watching the game. They'll let me hang and have have some sort of soda and a few slices. They know who I am. These are the benefits of being a regular. Uh, I get to loiter and not really <laughs> uh, get thrown out. So. Oh, uh, I'll be working that night. I uh, I work later shifts at my job, but oh well. Oh well. For, luckily, it'll be like one of the slowest nights of the year for me. Normally, I'd stream the big game on TV and watch it through YouTube and so screw that. I'd rather walk down to the local pizzeria that's less than a, a third of a mile from my house and uh, watch it there and hang out. Bug, not really bug the uh, the people behind the counter. I'll just it's very quiet there anyway. I'll just sit in the corner, watch the game, and behave myself and tweet <laughs> out the like, oh, it just dropped, just dropped. But who knows exactly what's going to happen? We'll get more as time goes by. Um, that seems to be about it. Uh, anything else, Randy? No, I think that's all I've got. And that's pretty much all I got. I'll, I'll save the ranting and raving uh, on some of the other stuff at another time. Uh, there's a few other things that could tie in into it, but I have to uh, deep dive into them. Uh, so folks, stay tuned uh, to our little after show stuff. And uh, again, stay tuned for big things that will be happening with us. And yes, I know I have to start streaming more on Mixer.com. Uh, hopefully... Uh, yes, I got to start playing Red Dead again. Um, I also have to, one of these days, once I get more money, I pick up uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, uh, which will be released in the next few weeks. And hopefully when I get more money, I'll be picking that up too. And that hopefully that will be popular enough that I'll get more views on Mixer. So uh, stay tuned to the after credit stuff, which will be happening right about and welcome back, everyone. That was Randy from Geek World Order. All the links to his uh, site and his Facebook page and Twitter will be the usual spots down below in the show description. And not to mention, uh, to find us, you can find us uh, on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Long Coat Mafia Podcast, and if you wish to join in the conversation, you can leave us a message there or send us an email to longcoatmafia at gmail.com or you can send us a message on Twitter. Our handle is longcoatmafia and our Instagram handle as well if you want to follow us there is also longcoatmafia. Uh, we do have a Twitter page uh, it, it, not Twitter a YouTube pa channel. Uh, you'd have to search for Long Coat Mafia Podcast on it and uh, yes I should be uploading videos to it. I do have several. I got another one put together. I've been a lazy SOB in regards to that. Uh, I know I got to get on it. And um, so please stay tuned to that channel. That's where we'll be putting a lot more videos on it. And I might say there are going to be times that uh, we 
post exclusive videos to that channel or we'll be keeping a lot of our videos exclusive to YouTube. So go to our YouTube channel and subscribe and to keep update, updated with some of our uh, videos that we will put out. And uh, also uh, like our Facebook page because there will be, sometimes we'll put a few exclusive videos on Facebook as well. And what else? Uh, yes, I our Mixer channel. Uh, our Mixer channel is Mixer.com slash LCMP. Yes, I know I have not been streaming lately. Um, things have gotten, even though are a little slow, but they've been a little hectic uh, personally around here. So uh, we'll, we definitely have to, or at least I definitely have to start streaming again. Uh, I know I've been pro promising that. I had a good start this year, and I hope I would do plan on streaming more than last year so that there's that and what else am i forgetting oh yes uh where to find our show if you listen to us on a desktop computer and you wish to take us uh, uh on a mobile device uh you could find us on apple podcast google play uh spotify stitch radio the podbean app and where uh, podcasts are normally found and I might recommend the Podbean app because just in case, uh, even though a lot of people don't like the Podbean app, it does offer a wider selection than uh, Google Play and iTunes. Plus, uh, there are times where iTunes, not so much iTunes, Apple, Podca Apple Podcasts and uh, Google Play tends to hiccup a little bit. That way you are able to at least catch our episode. Uh, and please subscribe. And if you're a new listener, leave us a comment on uh, the site so to tell us what you think. Uh, let's see what else. If you're uh, on mobile but you wish to listen to us on a desktop computer, you're able to do so by going to iTunes, Spotify, Stitch Radio, and uh, our website, which is the long coat mafia dot podbean dot com uh, i do recommend uh, bookmarking our website because just in case itunes tends to hiccup up a lot and uh so therefore there's that uh see all besides all the links to our stuff will be in the show description as well and see what else uh that seems to be about it uh so I'm going to leave it at like that. Yes, uh, as of this recording, I'm recording it the night of the Royal Rumble. I might speak to a few people after like, next week in regards to it. So who knows? So stay tuned for the next episode of the Long Coat Mafia podcast. Again, if you enjoy, uh, leave a comment or everything else on our Facebook and so rest of the social media. So stay tuned. Thank you and have a good week. You've been listening to the Long Coat Mafia Podcast, the Internet's most hated and mafia-themed geek podcast. <laughs>